one intro to Git. I'm Alana Burke. Um, I work at a small firm called Chromatic. You can find us at chromatichq.com. Uh, we're a fully distributed Drupal firm. There's about 15 of us. You can find me on Twitter and Drupal.org at aburke626. And you can find me on the Drupal Slack and GitHub at Alana Burke. So let's start by talking about what version control actually is. Um, it's a system to record changes to your files over time. It tells you who made the changes, when they made them. Uh, hopefully it's going to tell you what the changes were. Um, and you can see what happened to your changes at any point in time. Um, it can be a centralized type of version control, like subversion, or it can be distributed, like Git or Mercurial. Um, those are the two most popular ones, and there are a whole bunch of other ones out there. So why use Git instead of any of these other ones? Well, distributed version control allows you to download a full copy of the entire project. You go online, you clone the repository, we'll get into that, and you have that entire project locally on your machine. Whereas um, with something like Subversion, you are just using a little piece of that project at a time. It is hosted somewhere else. It makes it a lot more complicated. Um, with Git, everyone can work, everyone on your team can work on the same project at the same time. Um, you can do a lot of different branching. It's really easy. We'll talk about that. You can merge in your changes. It's really performant. Git is really, really fast. Um, so here's just a few links um, for getting started with Git if you don't have Git on your machine. Um, just some of the download links. Also a really cool thing is try.github.io. Um, you can just play with it in your browser um, and play with all the different commands without having to worry about setting anything up locally or messing with any repositories. So that's a really, really cool way to just get used to the commands and how they work. Because we are going to be using the command line today. It's a very powerful tool for interacting with computers. It's very fast. So we're going to go over a couple basic non-Git specific commands before we get into Git, just in case. Because you're going to need these for interacting with Git. So the first one, cd changes your directory. So if you need to go into a different file, a different folder. ls will list all of the files in that directory. And la will list all of the details of the files. Clear will clear your screen, all of your scroll back if you've got too much going on. If you want to create a file but not get into it, you can say touch and then the file name. And if you want to create a folder but not get into it, you say mkdir, so make directory, and then the directory name. So these are just a few things that will make your life a whole lot easier. And if you start using the command line regularly, you're going to be using these almost every day. Um, it can be helpful to have a GUI client um, if you need to visualize a workflow or if you have complex merge client, um, complex merge conflicts. Um, I do keep one around for those occasions, but Git is really best on the command line. Um, it's going to be faster, easier. It's you know you you're just working within it. Hello, come on in. Um, your, your workflow is just a lot easier if you're working on the command line. So these are some of the most popular clients. There's um, the GitHub client, Tower is a very popular one, and Source Tree is my personal favorite, and it's free. Can you leave that up to this? Sure. Is that a .org or a .com? Oh, um, it's .com. And that um, Git SCM, that's where you find all of the, the Git documentation. So we'll, there'll be some more links to that 
up and down. That is like the um, the official documentation for Git. So um, once you have Git on your machine, um, you want to get it configured globally so that your every time that you commit something, it's got all your information. So these are the commands that you'd want to run to give it your name and your email address. So the first one is git config um, global user.name and then your name and then user.email and your email address. Again, much easier than trying to set this up in a client which might not set it up globally, it's just going to set it up in one little place. And I'll post these slides online so you don't have to try and write everything down. Um, Git is also going to be set up to use your default editor, um, such as Vim. If you want to use a different editor, you're going to do something like the following. If you're using Windows, this gets a lot more complicated. You have to give it like the exact file path. Um, so I would recommend just checking out the documentation there. Um, but it's similar. You're just going to say core.editor and then the name of your editor. So now we get into actually using Git. So um, to clone an existing Git repository, really simple, git clone. And if you're in GitHub, a lot of these examples are going to use GitHub because that's one of the most popular. You could also, Bitbucket is probably the next most popular. Um, but if you go into GitHub, if you look at a repository, in the upper right, it's going to say something like clone or download. And you can get this link that's going to be your .git link. And you'd say git clone and that link. And that is going to, yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish what you're saying, then I ask you a question. Okay. So um, that's going to copy this entire repository, the entire project, onto your machine locally. So go ahead. Is there a way to <coughs> set up a project and get from, like, directly from the server? You mean, like, from your machine? Like, if you have, like, a, a website, like, on a server, if you want to put it, like, in a clone, uh, a Git, do I have, do you have to download it, like, on, from the server side, or can you do it from the command line? Okay, I'm just going to repeat that for the recording. So the question was, is there a way to set up Git from your server? So, um... Like clone, like so. I have I have like a Drupal site on my hosted server, but I want to set up a, a, a Git repository. So you want to get that into Git? Yeah. We're we're gonna get to that. Okay. Yeah. In fact, that's gonna be the very next thing. Is Git init creates a new Git repository. So you do this when you want to start developing and you don't yet have a remote repository. Most of the time, you're gonna do this when you've started developing and you don't have anything yet. But if you already have code and it's not yet in a repository, you would do this as well. And I'm going to say things, I'm usually going to say like locally because that's sort of best practice. But if you already have it on a server and it's not yet in version control, then yeah, you would do it on your server. Which, I mean, in that case, that would be local to you in a way, you know, because that's what you would be working on, um, you know, local being the machine that your code is on and remote being the where you are pushing it and, and storing it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And feel free to ask questions. This is a small group, so we can just kind of treat this like a class. I've taught this exact thing as a class, and it kind of works well that way. So. so here's just an example of what happens. So here I made a directory called test. I changed into that directory, and I said git init. And it says, initialize empty git repository in site slash test. And what git does is it makes a hidden folder called dot git. And that stores all the information about the git repository in that folder. So the next thing you need to know if you are setting up a repository from scratch with git init is your remote. So to See, if you have any remotes set up, your remote being where you're pushing it, which in most of these examples I'm going to use GitHub, um, you would say git remote, and then v in a lot of commands is going to be, stands for verbose, meaning list out all the things that you're doing. 
Um, and that's going to tell you if you have any remotes. To add a remote, so say you, um, you've got a folder here and you don't have anything in it, but you've got something on GitHub and you want to push to it. So you would say git remote add origin, your origin being the place that you're going to push, and then the name of your git repository. So here's an example of this. So here I said, git remote add origin, and here's my test git repository. And then I check to see what this is. And it's giving me two links here. It says fetch and push. We're not going to get into that. If you want to do some really complex stuff, you can set up different remotes for where you're fetching and where you're pushing. Um, I have literally never done that. It's, it's pretty uncommon, but so you don't have to worry about that. So your remote is where your code is stored, and that's usually going to be something like GitHub. Um, origin, you can change the name of that. It's just sort of the what GitHub is calling your the place where your repository is. Um, not usually a lot of cases to change the name of that. Um, I can't think off the top of my head that I've ever had a reason to change that. Um, it's just how GitHub knows what what it's pushing to. You could, if you were using something like, um, say, Pantheon, maybe, and you wanted to push to Pantheon, say, another test server, you might have a couple of different remotes, and you would say, like, maybe one you would name, instead of origin, you might name one Pantheon, and you would name one, like, my other remote or something. And so when you pushed, you would have to, instead of saying origin, you would say, like, Pantheon and my other remote. So um, that's out of Get 101, but I just wanted to explain what origin kind of means. Okay, so branching. Branching is one of the most important parts of source control with Git. Creating a branch allows you to work on your code in a repository, the code in your repository in a silo, separate from any other code changes. Git branch says, make a copy of the code that I'm working on and let me make changes in it. I'm not gonna make any changes to this existing code. I'm gonna make a copy of it and make all my changes in there. So you can do whatever you want. You can screw it all up. You can break it you can get rid of it, do whatever you want and you haven't broken anything in the main project. It's pretty much the most important thing and one of the reasons Git is so powerful. Super easy to do. Say git branch and um, name your branch. Checking out a branch allows you to switch to a different branch or what you'll wind up doing a lot is combining the branch and checkout commands to make a new branch and switch to it. So you can check out an existing name by using, sorry, an existing branch by using git checkout and then your branch name, or you can make a new branch and switch to it by saying git checkout dash b and then your branch name. So here's an example of that. So I checked out what's called my master branch, switched to it, git tells me, hey, you're up to date. And I said, okay, I wanna make a new branch called new branch and check it out. So I said git checkout b new branch and it says hey you switched to a new branch called new branch. So the main branch of your repo is called master and a general git workflow you have your master branch. This is what this is the code that's on your website your live code and then you're probably going to have a develop branch and that's probably what you are using on your QA site or your testing site. Then you have what's called feature branches. So say I'm working on an issue or something for a client, I'm going to make what's called feature branches. So you know I check out something called you know ticket one two three new report view and that's a feature branch and those get merged into develop for testing and then when those are good they might get merged into that develop will get merged into master and then that's live you might also have release branches if you work in 
like an agile or a sprint where you know you would say okay all of this work is going to get put into this release so we're going to work like this and we're going to have all of these tickets in this release branch which again most people are going to merge into develop for testing and then merge develop and master um, you would also have hot fixes where something needs to get merged immediately um, and I would usually name that like hot fix whatever the issue is and that more likely is going to get merged straight into master um, there's a couple of links here when I post this you can test these out for things about git workflows and git branching mod models um, everybody does this a little differently but this is a pretty typical setup so let's talk about git add um, so this stages or prepares your files or directories to be committed. So you just say git add in the name of the file or the whole directory. If you say git add and then just a period, this will stage all of your modified and added files, but not anything that's been deleted. If you want to also stage your deleted files, you have to say all. So git add all will also stage your deleted files. And then I'm going to kind of combine this by showing you git status, which is something you're going to use all the time to see what's going on in your repo. The git status just shows you the whole status of your current working directory, everything that's going on. So here I've said git add sites, which is a directory, and I said git status. It says, okay, you're on branch, new branch, and here's the changes to be committed because I've added them. Um, it'll also give you some instructions here, like you can say git reset to unstage these. So here's what's been modified. And here are the changes that are not staged for commit. Um, so this is something you're going to use all the time. And it also tells you, hey, you can add a file to update what's going to be committed. And you can use git checkout dash dash to discard all of the changes in your working directory. So Git is actually pretty good at giving you help all the time. So Git commit commits the stage changes to your branch and gets them ready to push. And if you add dash M, which you should always, it will add a message to your commit. So if I say git commit dash M, added header to report view. One thing I can't stress enough is to commit early and often. Small self-contained commits are easier to understand, and they're also easier to revert if something goes wrong. If you spend days and days and days working on something and then make some massive commit, well, if you go to test that and something is wrong, it's gonna be a lot harder to find it. It's gonna be a lot harder to pick out what was wrong and fix it. Um, especially if, say, Maybe it doesn't get found in testing. Maybe it gets pushed, and maybe a couple weeks later, someone is on the site and they say, hey, something isn't working right. Well, now you've got a regression. Now you've got to go back and figure out when did something go wrong and where was it wrong. Well, if all of your code is in little commits where you had little chunks of code very nicely wrapped up and described, it's gonna be a lot easier to find, well, where was the code that broke something? Is there, sure. any, is there any limitation to the number of commits that you can do? Absolutely not. There's no limitation on the number of commits you can do. You can commit every single character change if, you, if that made you happy. I wouldn't suggest it. But no, you can commit as many times as you like. Um, I, um, I try to keep my commits sort of logical, like, um, so in this example, I say like adding header to report view, and this one says adding report view. So um, in, the, in the next slide or two, I'll talk about what makes a good commit message, but I like to keep mine so that I can describe it in a few words. If I need more than a few words to describe it, then it probably should have been another commit. Like that's just sort of my personal way of doing it. Um, so here, um, I say git commit m adding report view, and then it tells me, okay, new branch, and this is the commit hash, which when you get into some more um, advanced git stuff, you might use that. Um, that's the unique identifier for this commit. It says, okay, adding report view, 
tells you how many files were changed. Um, I think this is how many line insertions and how many deletions. So here we go, commit messages. Um, anatomy of a great commit message. This is something that a coworker of mine did a blog post on. It should always have one line in the summary. Capitalized and succinct, 50 characters or less. If it needs a longer description, it can be followed by that. Um, but there should be a, an empty line in between. All lines should be wrapped at about 72 characters. And if you have an issue to reference, like a GitHub or Bitbucket issue, um, you should reference it there so that people who are looking at these can find them. Um, I rarely find the need to put a longer description. Like I said, I like to keep my commits so small that they don't ever need them. But if you're doing something long and complex or um, something that maybe you need to describe to a stakeholder, depending how your workflow goes, um, you would want to describe it in a longer description here. So here's an example of a a really wonderful long commit message. So we've got fix for editor dashboard showing incorrect date. Fixed date calculation logic. Added function doc block to comply with coding standards. Refactors <coughs> for each loop, improving clarity. Closes GHA. I personally am the kind of person who would have put a commit for each of these, but that's just me. This is a perfectly legitimate, wonderful commit message. They've got an empty line between these, they put lovely little bullets, and they reference a GitHub issue. Um, and if you want more information on this, um, we have a blog post with some more examples. But you should always have informative commit messages. You don't ever want people wondering, you know, what was this? Don't just write updated or fixed or fixed broken code or updated again. No one ever likes to go back and look at those. There should always be something concrete. Um, I've read some things about commit messages that say things like uh, a commit message should always finish the sentence like this commit fixes. Like it should, it should be the second half of that sentence. Um, so I actually got through these slides really fast. Um, I didn't intend to talk that fast. But if anyone has any questions or wants to do anything like interactive or go through any of this, I'm totally happy to do that. I didn't realize I, I did it a lot slower at home. <laughs> go ahead. One really quick question. Sure. Is there a, is there a utility out there um, except uh, besides uh, the ones you listed, the GUI loads you listed, that would create maybe like a, an interface looks like a spreadsheet showing the, com the commit ID and then a description so you can go through them. Okay, so the question was, is there a GUI out there that would create a spreadsheet view that shows the commit ID and the... The message. And the message. Kind of like a table. Like it, um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, I'm not sure that I've ever needed that particular information. Sarah? Tower actually kind of does that. Tower does that? Okay. Yeah, they have the, the name of the person who pushed the um, commit ID and then the message. Okay. Um, awesome. In Stash, when you push something to Stash and have a pull request, the pull request has your commit messages here are each of the commits with when they were committed and all the information about that. That's how that same stuff. Yeah, and um, I mean, I love a command line, but you know, the GUI can definitely be useful for quickly scrolling through history or trying to find things um, like that, as well as, um, oh, so I mentioned merge conflicts a couple of times, if you're not familiar with that. So how that happens is when you have changed something locally and it has also changed on the remote, um, either if you pull the remote into your local or if you push your local into the remote without pulling it first and you have changed the same code, you'll get what's called a merge conflict. So you have to resolve that manually generally, which means taking a look at that file and saying, okay, um, you know, this person changed these lines and I changed these lines. Um, 
you know, and just editing it to, to fix how it should be, which is usually pretty straightforward unless you were actually editing the same function, in which case you're going to have to collaborate and fix that. Um, you know, Git just can't understand why two people changed the same lines, even though you probably both just added a function and it said, okay, you added a function at line 70 and you added a function at line 70. You know, it's only a computer. Um, so generally you fix that, you say add, you say commit, and um, you know, Git will resolve that. But sometimes it gets a little complicated to look at on the command line, and it can be a lot easier to take a look at it um, in a GUI where it'll you know mark it off in nice colors, and you can say, okay, here's where it is. You know, this is the line where it's messed up, and this is the line where it stops being messed up. And now I can go open it, and an editor can take a look at it. Um, so that's merge conflicts. They're generally not a huge deal. A great way to avoid them is when you are pulling, and I thought. This is not the end of my slides. Hang on a second. I thought they ended really early. One moment. Because um, I was going to say, um, there's definitely some stuff about Git pulling in here somewhere. There should be, because you should pull often. Um, just bear with me for a moment. I'm just going to... Really? That's also where small commits can help you. Yes. Because you're much less likely to trump on somebody else's code if you just got a little I'm just going to blank that out for a sec while I go look for my presentation and figure out why it's not uh, up to date. Sorry about that. Um, Sorry, technical issues. Computer, you're wrong. So I want to talk to you about get pushing and pulling. Because those are kind of important. Hold, please. Resuming, I thought this ended really early, but I just believed my computer when it told me I was at the end of my slideshow. Okay, um, so we'll just resume. So after you've committed, if you want to reset changes that you've staged and unstage them, you can just say git reset. Um, this won't get rid of the actual changes that you've made to the files. Um, it will just take them out of getting ready to be committed. If you actually want to discard them, and go back to the previous state that you were in, you have to add dash dash hard. And that will actually get rid of the changes to your files. So when you are all committed and you are ready to go, you have to push the code to your remote repo using git push. Usually you want to be pretty specific with this. So you would say git push. The u tells the repo to track the upstream or remote branch, so that you're always, um, if you saw it in some of the previous messages, it was saying things like, you're up to date, there aren't any changes. That's because I always use the U command and say, hey, this branch should always be tracking the upstream branch, always, always be looking at this remote branch. And then I said origin to tell it, hey, make sure you're looking at the origin branch and then the name of my branch. So here we go, here's an example of git push. So I said git push u origin new branch, which is the name of my branch, and it tells me objects, blah, 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 compression, writing, total, and then it tells me where it pushed them. Um, and then it tells me that my, my branch is set up to track 
the remote branch from origin. Git pull. That pulls your remote branch into your local branch. So to reduce merge conflicts, which is why I remembered that I had more slides, um, pull often so that you always have a copy of the latest code. So because Git allows so many developers to work on the same code at the same time, you know, your code might always be changing. So for example, you know, I'm working on a project with Sarah and she's always pushing to our, our feature branch. So I always have to make sure that I am pulling that branch down because otherwise we're going to be working on the same thing and we're going to have merge conflicts. So the more often you pull, the less often you have to deal with merge conflicts. Fetch will fetch your changes from your local repository. I mean, sorry, from your remote repository. This will tell your local repository about new branches or any other changes. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't pull anything. It doesn't change any files. It just tells you about them. So here's an example of git fetch. Um, it's not entirely true that it doesn't do anything. It gets other branches, but it doesn't change your files or overwrite anything. So it tells you, here, we found all this new stuff, um, and there was this, this new branch in the remote repository, so we went and got that for you. Git merge is something to know about, but you're not going to use this much in everyday development. It merges one branch into another, as you may have guessed. But when you use git pull, um, it actually uses merge. Um, and when you want to merge a branch, um, for example, into master, it's very likely that you're going to be doing this online, like in the GitHub interface via a pull request. Um, it's much less likely that you're actually going to be doing it on the command line. But you should still know that it exists. So we'll talk about a few common mistakes, um, mistakes, pitfalls, things that you can over, um, things that you can fix. We already talked about um, how to reduce and fix merge conflicts. Um, Git amend helps you to amend or edit your previous commit. So if you've changed something, you can say git commit dash dash amend. Um, if you want to add it to your previous commit, add the file first, say git add, and then um, you should add a new message. Um, well, if you, sorry, if you don't want to add, change the message, just say amend. If you do want to update the commit message, you can add a new message. Um, so this will just add it to your previous commit without, um, or sort of overwrite your previous commit message without just making a new message. But this only works if you haven't pushed yet. If you've already pushed this, it's just going to make a new commit. This can be really handy, like if you did something and then realized you had a typo or something like that, just say git commit amend, and then you know, if you don't need to change your message, perfect. Or if you had a typo in the commit message, you would say git commit amend and then amend the message. I use this all day, every day. Um, one that I forget a lot and have to look up, and I don't know why because it's really easy, is um, how to rename a branch because I get typos in my branch names. Git branch dash m and then the new branch name. You just do this from the branch that you're on to change that branch's name. Then the old branch name no longer exists and you have a new branch name. And I didn't mute my phone. I'm a terrible person. Um, so now that's the official end of my slide. So those are just a couple of things that come up um, for me pretty often that I try to fix. Um, I didn't want to get into anything too in-depth, although I know I mentioned a few things, because Git can get complex, but I don't find it intimidatingly so. Um, it was interesting when I was doing research for this. I was surprised to find how many people, if you type Git is in Google, you'll find so many people who are like, Git is a nightmare. And I think that if you think Git is a nightmare and so complex, I think it is your process that is wrong and not 
get. I think anything can be a nightmare if you have a bad enough process. So having a good workflow and a good grasp on the basics, like with anything, is probably the most important thing. Um, you know, people were talking about like how, how horrible merge conflicts are, and I, you know, I've been working with Git for almost a decade, and I don't think I've ever had a merge conflict that I would even call a nightmare. And if I did, it was my own fault. So um, I just thought it was really interesting to see how many people actually just hated Git, and some of those people just seemed to think we should do everything via FTP, and I just had to close my browser and cry. So um, it was just kind of interesting to me. Um, so if there's any questions or anything anyone wants to go over or wants help with, I am I'm happy to do that. Um, I forget what time this presentation actually officially ends. I didn't get a badge. They were out of them. <laughs> but um, what's, what's interesting about Git is you have to force yourself into it. I, on the other hand, am lazy. So although I've attempted several times to get into it, I fall back to just, oh, I'm just going to make the change on my dev stick and I'll move, I'll do the same. Where if I had Git, my workflow would probably be about five or ten times faster. You really have to use it all day, every day to start learning it, which usually means there's someone on your team who at some point is going to say, we are using Git now, and that's it. Um, when I wanted to learn Git, I think I was actually the person on my team who said, we are using Git now. And just so that I would have to learn it, um, which was awesome. And now I'm on a team where everyone uses Git, and it's fantastic. And I can't imagine um, not using it. I think we had one client that I encountered a couple years ago that wasn't using any version control <coughs> yet, and it was it was horrifying. Um, and we got them onto it, and that was that was good. <laughs> sure. Can you actually talk about uh, branching again and like, maybe walk through an example of how to branch something? Now, I work at a place where I'm working on a theme, right? And I guess I want to take all those files and do my own sort of instance of it. But the commands don't make it easy for me to just do it quickly, so I end up just like copy pasting two, two instances of it and working in one and then deleting the first one and then moving all the. It's, it's really bad. Sure, so, okay. So the question. Sorry, I have a question. But, uh, yeah, no. Get sub modules. That's a thing. So. Um, so the question was, can I go through an example of branching? And I can certainly do that. Let me. Um, so we. Let me just pull up a. Let's see. Um, am I? Actually, I'll just go into the repo for this presentation. Um, so I'm on the master branch for this repo, which I actually need to push. So I'm going to, I'll just give you an example here. Um, so there's everything that's in this repo. Um, here's a status. Um, I've made some changes to this, and I want to add them all. I'm just going to do this so that I can get to branching. <laughs> um, I want to add everything. We'll just show you how that looks. Um, so everything is ready to be committed. Um, oh my gosh, what is DS store, and why is it in like every repository? You know? It's, it's a Mac. some weird Mac file. Uh, if this were a client site, I would have a Git ignore that told that file to go away. But this is just a reveal JS presentation, <laughs> so I don't yeah. care. I've just seen it and I've never known an explanation for it. So it's an yeah. Thing. Yeah, it's just an app. Most people wouldn't understand. <laughs> well, it, it, it informs the build oh, of what's yeah. going on in the directory. Okay. Um, so that's commit. I'm, I turned my Wi Fi off because it kept asking me to connect and I didn't actually want to, so I'm not going to push it. But um, so if I wanted, so I'm on the master branch because. Um, I'm working on master because again, this is just a presentation. I would normally never do that if it were a, like a website. But so let's say um, so git. Well, here's how you would normally do: git checkout um, branch. So this creates and checks out the branch at the same time. 
Um, and then let's say that um, you know I was working, you know, from GitHub issues. Um, I usually like my naming convention is usually to say GH, and then the number of it, and then a description of it. So like fix header text or something like that um, would be like an. Or if it would be cool if I could type. Um, so that's a pretty typical example of how you would check it out. So now I have everything here, just like I had before. Um, we, yeah. So you can see it's exactly the same, same files, um, but it's just a completely new copy. Um, so I can do anything I want, and it's not going to affect um, the changes that were made here that are already committed and and done and clean. Um, I also have a whole bunch of plugins in my terminal that tell me things like this yellow means that they're, well this tells me what branch I'm on, um, this yellow means that I have things that aren't, uh, they tell me my branch isn't clean, there are things that aren't committed, this tells me that everything here is clean and that everything here is committed, so that kind of stuff. Um, and I think we also have, um, if you look on Chromatic site, I think that there's also a blog post on that um, kind of handy stuff. So if you're working in Git a lot, that kind of stuff can be really helpful. Because sometimes you might miss a file, especially if you did something like git add without like the all and you didn't realize that you um, had missed something, then I'll realize it's yellow and I'm like, oh, what did I miss? This should have been green. So that kind of thing can be really helpful. Can you add your list of plugins to your presentation when you put it online, please? Yeah, let me grab a pen and remind myself. Or Sarah, can you make a note for me to do that? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for making you my secretary. <laughs> um, does that help explain what? I think so. OK. Think so. so we're in this new branch, right? Yeah. What we do is make changes at the say get status, get out all the files, get status again, make sure it's all green. And then do you check out to the master branch, or do you just push it and or commit it let okay, so let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can demo this. Let's let's live on the edge here. I'm done with my presentation. Let's live on the edge. Let me change something. So the is going to keep track of. Oh, you have change on this line of this file, and it's different because I did a comparison. Sure. And so then it's going to give you a list of these are the seven files that you touched, and you can decide then that these four are the ones that I want to commit. These three I'm still working on. And so you add those. And then when you when you then get commit, then it says, okay, now these are this is the new way of doing things. And so then but you still only have that local. Sure. That's not part of the you're still over off on a little bridge. Right. And then when you merge it is when it goes back into whatever, everybody is going right, to right. so point or something. Okay, I'm, I'll do a whole live demo here. So, all right, so I just modified my file. Um, so you can see that it's modified. I'm going to add it. So working on this branch, I'm going to commit it. Sorry, I can't see my screen. And then I'm going to have to connect to the internet. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What we got here? Drupaladelphia. Yeah, I know. I put the pet. Did I spell it wrong? I did. Hmm. 
live demo. There we go. All right. So now, so this is the what you would normally do if you were working in GitHub is you would get here and you would you're going to push this branch. So I'm going to say git push. I'm going to track the upstream origin and then my branch name. And it's going to go da 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 da. We did it. So now, a normal. Oh, this is Chrome, that's why, sorry. What is that repo called? Uh, sorry. So then when you go to the repo in GitHub, it's like, hey, look, you just push this. And normally what you would do is like a pull request type of um, process. So I'm like, hey, let's make a pull request. And so you can say, um, these are actually the last couple of commits I did. Um, I updated it and then, hey, live demo. Um, and here's where you would tell anything, like, if your team is reviewing it, you'd say, hey, look, this is all the stuff. These are all changes I need. Please review. And you put any of the information that they need to see, like screenshots and reference all the issues that it fixed and things like that. This is what I do every day, day to day. You can assign people and review them. That's all the cool GitHub stuff and then say create a pull request. So this is why I said you're not gonna do a lot of merging because you're gonna do it in here. Um, and then when it gets approved by whoever, you know, on your team, or even if it's just you, like even when I'm doing my own stuff a lot of time, I'll do this just to keep it um, in a nice kind of workflow. Then you would merge it. Do, 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 do. And then you can get rid of that branch but it, you're still going to have it locally. I still have that branch locally. I've just deleted it on the remote. Um, and now, if I go to... We're in a GUI right here, right? Technically, yeah. And now this should be... Do, 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 do. Live demo! <laughs> it worked. Does that help explain a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So you can resolve the... Comp like changes even from the command line, too. You don't have to mm -hmm. go to doing. Oh, yeah, you can I, absolutely resolve them from the command line. It's I saw that you pushed to your uh, branch, essentially. Mm -hmm. Can you push to master once you've sort of made it, or do you have to, like, switch branches? Sorry. So I saw that you said you were in the branch that you created, right? And then you said push. Oh, you said push board. Sorry. No, that's OK. Origin is right. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm in a different branch from master. Yeah. So, you could, you can merge into master without using GitHub. I mean, you don't have to do that. Um, if you wanted to just use a git merge. Okay. Um, you know, you can do that all on the command line if you would like. I, I just happen to really like the pull request. Um, I like having that history. I'm, I'm just, I live a lot of my life in GitHub. I either live it on the command line or in GitHub. So I like having that sort of history around too. Um, plus it's, you know, it's searchable. So it's, it's kind of in there. Like all I, you know, all of my clients are in GitHub. So that's helpful. Um, I don't really think of that as much as like a GUI that you don't want to use, you know, like you want to use the command line instead of like, the GitHub GUI or source tree or tower because it's kind of faster and easier to use, but I don't really think of GitHub that way, sure. if that makes sense. Okay. I'm really happy that that worked. You never really know. Um, anything else? I, I really don't have a badge and I don't know what time the session is over. Okay. 
sometimes they're an hour, sometimes they're 50 minutes. Do you have any experience with cherry picking? <sighs> Some. I would say that is totally a more advanced yeah. topic that I'm not prepared to give a good explanation of. I think I would give a more confusing explanation okay. of it, to be totally honest. That's um, a, when, when merge conflicts go really haywire and things get merged when you shouldn't have probably. <laughs> For those who don't know, I can explain what cherry picking is. It's when you need to, the cherry pick is to take various commits out of um, and put them into a new, like you take a various set of commits and get them together and stage them for like a new set of changes. It can be really complicated um, and is never any fun. Um, and like I said, I'm. If I were to try to explain it any more than that, I think I would make a really complicated and um, confusing explanation. Thank you. Sure. Can I ask about self bondings? Oh, what, of Git? Yeah. Is that a... Like, of what in particular? I have no idea what it is, but I've heard it has to do with branching. I don't really know anything in particular about... I mean, I've never installed anything okay. extra to Git. So I don't know that there's anything in particular that you need. I mean, I've, I have things on all sorts of fancy things on my command line that make it look fancy. Um, but I don't know of anything in particular that you need to make it work. So. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, as long as you can run Git, you can do anything you need to do. So if anyone's telling you any different, they're just trying to make your life harder. Delete merged branches locally. Um, Is that that? um, there's a prune command, I think, and there's another. I'm a terrible person to ask because I never do it. I just have some weird fear of needing them, which is terrible. Don't don't do that. Delete your local branches. Off the top of my head, I have to tell you that I don't know. Um, on our team, you can ask Mark. He has some command that checks against all his remote branches and then deletes the ones that have been merged. And about every six months, I ask him what that command is. It might be pinned in our Slack somewhere. If you find out what it is, I'll put it in my presentation. Um, yeah, you don't need your, I mean, once your branches have been merged, you don't need them anymore. So you can totally delete them. If they don't actually take up, like, I, I will admit that I do not know the ins and outs of how, like, Git works on a hardware level, but it doesn't take up vast amounts of space on your machine. It's just nice to clean it up so that if you're looking for a branch, you don't have 8,000 branches. Um, and I, you know, I'm always tabbing through them on my, you know, if I'm looking for a branch, so it can get confusing. Will you have your slides up? Um, well, since the uh, internet is working, um, I just I want to. Sarah took a couple notes for me on things that people asked me to add. So as soon as I get those, oh. I'll have them up today. Great. And I think there's I have instructions somewhere about how to do that. So as soon as I find those instructions, <laughs> cool. Sorry, my, they gave me presenter notes, but that's it, and it doesn't have anything like how long your session is or how to do other things. Kind of flying back to see my pants. <laughs>